Hello everyone, welcome back to the Topical Hour. Today we're going to be reviewing Batman Arkham Knight. Now there's something that people say about this game, that Arkham Knight will always be the worst game out of the other three in the Arkham series. Although some people say that about Origins, but remember, we don't consider those people as real human beings. The car is used too much, Batman kills people with it like nobody's business, the story is the worst it's ever been, the game is too easy, Joker steals the show, it doesn't have the soul of the other games. You know, I get it. I was a naive little boy back in 2015 who had played all the other Arkham games, but seeing the trailer for this game, my god, the graphics alone were enough to make my nipples erect. But to see the horrific looking scarecrow taking over the city, even if for nothing else, I'd have to get this game for their face reveal of Scarecrow, which of course there would be one. Funnily enough, I didn't get this game until 2018, and the only spoiler I got was that Jason Todd was the Arkham Knight, which it wasn't that hard to figure out. But the nice thing about 2018 was that I had only just started looking into the comics and watching all of the DC and Marvel media. I didn't know or care about who Jason Todd was back then, so I still had a decent spoiler-free gameplay experience. However, I was still pretty disappointed. My erect nipples faded right back to normal by the end of my playthrough, and then I saw how awesome the DLC looked, but that I couldn't get it yet, so I just put the game back on my shelf for two years. But then I grabbed it again recently for my Arkham series rapid review, and JESUS CHRIST! All of the other Arkham games have real replayability, but oh my god, I really can't stop myself from going back to this game. I've done a 240% run through twice, and I'm literally working on my third as we speak. Now, while the story is legitimately offensive, everything else about the game is great. There are zero transitions for when you walk through doors, the character models are actually pretty good. Side note, I will say that every character in this game looks like unacceptably filthy and dirty. Except for, like, Joker towards the end. Oh yeah, Joker looks clean and healthy when he's about to take over Batman and is at his strongest. Do you see the metaphor? But this game genuinely looks gorgeous and plays way too well for 2015, even for a little over four years in development. I also know a lot of people who say the DLC are really short, especially compared to something like Spider-Man's, but if you just buy the season pass and get all four missions, I think it's actually kind of fine for length. Plus, you get a ton of suits with it, and the suits look really good, so I'm pretty much okay with it. I also wanted to take a second and talk about the Mad Hatter side mission. Maybe this is just me, but wouldn't it have been cool if they took the redone character models from this DLC and put them in the Return to Arkham bundle? I know I'm not the only one who thinks that Arkham City looks like a literal feces and Asylum would have been way cooler with some of those models. Moving on, we have to get the story of this game out of the way before I forget because it's really hard not to talk about. See, the main problem that people have with this game is its namesake, the Arkham Knight. It's probably in the top three of worst phase reveals ever in a video game, because anybody who knows anything about Robin in the comics knows that Robin died in a death in the family. Oh yeah, uh, spoiler. But this reveal was just the worst. I mean, picking that character to reveal from the beginning was a terrible idea. He's never been mentioned in the Arkham series, he's never been foreshadowed, and Joker's never even talked about him. I mean, I don't know. Batman didn't seem that mad at Joker for killing his surrogate son in Asylum. He just seemed like mad that he was, you know doing bad things. And you know what? It would have been the coolest thing ever if Batman called Tim Drake Jason by accident like they said in Arkham Knight. That would have been cool and added something emotional to the encounter we get with Tim in Arkham City. But no, we're not going to do that. We're not going to foreshadow a twist at all, just to keep it a surprise even though everyone figured it out from the trailer. So yes, the Arkham Knight is a dumb twist and it's not even worth wasting any more time on. Honestly, just ignore him. Another main antagonist in this game is Scarecrow. He doesn't really do much past the first five minutes, except come into your comms or onto the billboard and talk about how your previous victory doesn't matter and that he'll win the war. Seriously, that's over half of his lines in this game. When you destroy over a hundred tanks at the siege of GCPD, the commander is baffled and tells Scarecrow, and Scarecrow's literally just like, you played your part, now Batman will play his. Like, what does that even mean? When it comes to numbers, you're still losing, bro. And then there's the third main antagonist of this game. Yeah, you heard that right. Third. I mean, if you want to count Riddler, I won't stop you, but Riddler just looks like a drunk uncle at a barbecue offering to fix your screen door in this game, and he makes little go-kart tracks to house Mar Batman. I wish I was kidding. But the real main antagonist is Joker, and all his we-don't-need-a-fourth-game-about-him glory. 
I'm actually going to say that I think that this game genuinely did Joker right. I mean it, he's completely in character, I think this game makes him a little scary again, especially after cartoons and stuff have turned him into a joke. Haha, <laughs> do you get it? This guy has killed children without blinking, he's tortured Jason Todd, he shot Barbara Gordon in the spine, he killed like everyone at Arkham Asylum. This guy is evil, and seeing him constantly try to take over Batman was awesome. Like, yeah, he was funny sometimes, but it's kind of easy to forget that his main goal in this game is to kill literally everyone. Anyway, Joker is done perfectly and we can move on, right? Well, not quite. Unfortunately, they even found a way to mess up the Clown Prince of Crime. See, Joker is perfect in this game, but he was also perfect in the last three. Honestly, no matter what they did with Joker in this game, he simply wasn't going to work. I'm one of the many people that believe that he should have been completely canned from Origins to fully flesh out the other three games as a trilogy and love letter for the Joker. Him being included in Origins didn't make Origins bad by any means, but it does serve a little bit to Arkham Knight's detriment, and it's one of the bigger issues of the series. Oh, and I forgot the last villain of this game. BATMAN! Batman makes some of the worst decisions in recorded comic book history in this game, and I am not okay with it. I'll go over the top three worst to save us a couple hours of time. First is lying to Robin and Oracle and Jim Gordon. Batman has four allies in this game that could fight by his side. Robin, Nightwing, Catwoman, and Jim Gordon. Heck, if you wanted to get really granular, you could include Azrael and Oracle too. Now I understand that Robin needed to work on the cure for most of this game, except that he actually didn't. We're shown quite directly that Batman's encounter with fear toxin and ace chemicals is what causes Joker's takeover to speed up so violently fast, but it wasn't speeding up before we got there. So why didn't Batman just have Robin help him when it wasn't an issue? Or call a Nightwing from Bloodhaven? I mean, I know Nightwing's not doing anything, judging from how long it takes for him to find Penguin's vans. Or even Catwoman! Literally just promise her a few million dollars and she's on your side forever. But no, he tries and acts mysteriously and constantly tells them to go away. He literally sounds like a 7th grade edgelord in this game. Dummy thing number two, not checking for the body of Jason Todd. On the literal cover of the Death in the Family comic, you can see Batman holding Jason's body. There are actual reasons as to why Jason came back later as Red Hood, but will we get any here? <sighs> nope. And finally, dummy thing number three is that Batman doesn't actually use his full arsenal for the war for the city. Like imagine, in the end, when Oracle's fighting beside Batman, that she literally summons the Batwing for air support. Or why does Batman not call a Nightwing, or the Batwing, or even Catwoman to help him stop Scarecrow at the asylum at the end? And the final thing on this point, the one thing that really ticks me off, is that you don't actually use the shot gloves! Guys, guys, I just have a quick question. I just have a quick question, okay? I just have a quick question. WHY?! Are you kidding me? Are you genuinely joking with me that Batman wants to even the odds with his car tank, but using Electrocutioner's gloves is like cheating for him? Why is this game's story and logic the way it is? Why can't the game just be good? I'm sorry. I've cooled down now. I can talk about the actual good things about this game. First off is the combat mechanics. Now, you actually need to play on Nightmare for you to actually understand what I'm saying here. Otherwise, it's too easy. But in Nightmare mode, it's actually fun. Upgrades and all. Now, the tank battles will always be a bit stinky. They could have used more time in the think tank before this game was released. However, the combat is the best it's ever been. It's fluid, it's fun, it's stylistic, and you can get a lot of it on a 240% playthrough. Taking down every militia watchtower, every road barricade, doing Azrael's trials, and at the end of the main story in general snags you a lot of time to hone your skills. And I truly believe this game delivers. In Arkham Asylum, you need maybe three buttons in that game to fight. Arkham City changed it up and added brute enemies, and Origins added shot gloves. But Arkham Knight did all of that tenfold. Brutes, minigunner brutes, electrified enemies, medics, riot shields, shot gloves, guns, knives, ninja swords, bats, and charging insta take down enemies. This Arkham game is easily the best when it comes to combat and its mechanics, but I do have to address tank combat a little bit. If you've never played or heard of this game, then you might think that the tank battles are too hard. No, dear viewer, the tank battles are literally the bread and butter behind this game, unfortunate as it is. They're simply way, way too easy for any gamer that's played more than three games. I mean it, I think I can only remember two times in recorded history when I actually lost a tank battle. And you know the worst part? It's because I was falling asleep after being up for over 24 hours. That's when the tank battles in this game get difficult, when you're sleep deprived. How sad is that? But the even bigger screw you hear is the tank stealth. Hold on guys, let me just take a quick second, a real quick second to say. WHAT THE f They're tanks! They're tanks in the streets of a dense city! How do you use a tank to sneak behind and destroy another tank? More importantly, WHY? 
I'd almost accept this if the stealth Cobra tanks were left until later in the game and were only used for the first Arkham Knight boss fight with the Cloud Burst. But no, they're shown off like 10 times in this game. Literally just put them in an open space with the Batmobile and then destroy Batman. Hmm. The Batmobile is the infected tooth in the mouth of this game. It just kills the whole thing before you even get started. But you know what? That's okay. Because the other 25% of this game that's not spent in the tank is actually good. We've already gone over the combat, but the stealth is on another level. First off, they introduced the fear insta takedown in the very beginning, and as overpowered as it is, I kinda like it. I feel like the stealth in this game has a lot more enemies than in the previous games. Like, the old ones had maybe up to 8 at a time, but this one goes up to like 20. And if you upgrade the fear takedown to 5, it can be really good for just doing a little bit of number thinning so you're not dealing with so many at once. Also, quick side note, we didn't really need the suits that aren't detectable by Predator Vision if there's already a Predator Vision jammer. You know, just gaming 101. You don't need a new feature when another feature handles it better. I also wish the medics weren't included with predator encounters. Like, the whole point of these encounters is to take your time and pick them off one by one in new and creative ways. Be the Batman, as it were. But I feel like the medics ruin that a little bit because I constantly have to put them in check instead of having genuine fun. But the rest of the predator mechanics are just fine. I like the mini gunners, although I think we should limit those to a max of two rather than six like on that one militia tower. I like the disruptor, although that looked like it was taken straight out of the Dark Knight trilogy, but it's still a cool addition. I like the voice modulator and how the enemies can adapt to it if it's used too often. It's actually really cool. I think I've spoken enough to segue into a conclusion. This game is a really mixed bag. The story is the worst one of the series and probably in the top 50 of worst video game stories, and it's too easy and it uses the tank too much, but honestly, I still play this game, like to this day. Bad story and all. No one besides the speedrunners and nostalgia seekers go back to the first two to three games. But people do go back to this game, and that's because not everything about it is terrible. It was an honest try, even if the story could have used a lot of work. I truly believe there are no major problems with the gameplay, and my philosophy is that if you're a fan of the older games and you think they did it better, then go back and play those games. This game was meant to be a new experience with new ideas and mechanics. It was not meant to be a copy and paste addition to the story. To say that the devs didn't care is simply incorrect. Heck, the guy who plays Batman in this and the other games, the legendary Kevin Conroy, has stated that this game is his favorite game. There was love put into this game. I mean, just look at the amount and quality of the DLC, which they knew that maybe a quarter of the player base would buy. At the end of the day, games are meant for entertainment and fun, and this game entertains me just fine. I, I have fun playing it, I'm pretty sure that's what it was designed for, so it might be kind of controversial, but I think this game gets a little bit too much hate from the gaming community in general. Disregarding the score I previously gave this game, which was a 4, I'm going to give it a pretty generous 6 out of 10. If you disagree with this score, then just know that your opinions are incorrect. The story sucks, but the gameplay and mechanics are some of the better ones out there. Like I always say, this review took me a long time to make, so if you could subscribe to add to the fruit of my labor, that'd be real cool. Or not, that's fine. Play nice, people.